Hi everybody and welcome back to another Chinese learning video. My name is Chris from fluentinmandarin.com as always and in this video I'm going to be talking about some difficult to understand Chinese characters, namely the three D characters. Okay, so you might have seen these before, you might not, but they are very important in Chinese sentences and Chinese grammar. So let's have a look at how these characters work. These three characters are all pronounced duh, then and they're not pronounced in any particular tone when they come in a sentence. They're always unstressed. And these three characters are really important in Chinese grammar. So these two duh characters are a bit simpler to understand. So let's talk about these ones first. So the first duh character is used after verbs to give you a bit more information about the verb. To, or to put it in a bit more of a complicated way, you can say that it's used before a complement to the verb. For example, you can say 你说的对 你说的对 means you said it right or what you said is right. And literally the sentence 你 is you. 说 say or speak 的 is a particle that's used before a complement or to give you a bit more information about the verb. The verb in this case is 说 say or speak and Dua is right. So you say and then giving a bit more information about this saying is right. So you said and moreover what you said was right. That's effectively how this sentence is working. It's used before a complement to give more information about the verb. Here are some more examples. Ta shuo de He speaks de very quickly. He speaks very quickly. So the very quickly is giving us more information about the verb shuo, meaning to speak. Another example, ta chang de hen hao. Ta chang de hen hao means she sings very well or she's very good at singing. Ta shi chang sing to sing. De is the grammatical particle. Hen hao very well. So this hen hao is giving us more information about the main verb chang. So she sings very well. So this de can also come before a complement to the verb that indicates the result of that verb. So one example that you might have heard very often or you might have used as a beginner is 我听得懂 or 我听不懂. So 我听得懂 means I understand. 我听得懂. So th literally this means I listen or I hear the means and the result is dong understand i listen and the result of this verb is understanding so to put this in just simple english it would just be i understand and you might also have heard what timbudong or timbudong literally means listen not understand so this is the same thing but in a negative form and a lot of people know that timbudong means i can't understand what timbudong Okay, another example. Ta ku de yan jing do hong la. Ta ku de yan jing do hong la. She cried so much that her eyes were red. Ta shi ku cry. De means indicating the result of this verb cry. Yan jing eyes do all or completely hong red. And la is a grammatical particle that I've talked about before, indicating uh, that a situation has changed in this case. Okay, so this is de used to express the result of a verb. So that's the first de. The second de is the one that you can see on the screen right now, and it's a little bit easier to understand. This de is used after an adjective to turn that adjective into an adverb. So it's often a little bit like adding ly to an adjective in English to make it into an adverb. For example, quick in Chinese would be quiet. And in a sentence, if we were saying quickly, it would be quiet a lot of the time. So let's have a look at some examples of how this works. So this is used at the end of a sentence and it means she said happily. Ta shi. 开心, happy, 的 makes it into an adverb, makes it into happily, 
and shuo is to speak or to say. So this means she said happily. Another example, 你要认真地听, you must listen carefully. 你, you, 要, must, 认真 means earnestly, carefully, or um, paying a lot of attention. And the makes this into an adjective, makes it into carefully. And 听 is hear or listen. Okay, so this is an example of how the that character that you just saw, can make an adjective into an adverb. And the last the is a little bit more difficult to understand. It has a, f- a few different usages. So let's talk about this the now. And in Chinese, this is also called bai shao de, by the way. Okay, so this character is actually the number one most common character in Chinese. So it's really important to know about it. And it's often used to connect different parts of a sentence together and to show the relationship between them. So, sometimes the is used to show possession. And in many cases, the thing that comes after the de actually has a more important position in the sentence than the thing that comes before. So it indicates um, the structure of the sentence. But let's have a look at some examples to see how this works. Sometimes this de can be used to show possession, that something belongs to something else, a little bit like apostrophe S in English. For example, Li Ming the Dianhua. Li Ming is a person's name. De is this particle that's showing possession. Dianhua, phone. Li Ming the Dianhua means Li Ming's phone. What a means. What a means means my name. So Wu means I. And if you add the to the end of this, it turns I into my. So it shows possession. What a means my name. Another example, 你的车, 你 is you. And so 你的 would be your. 你的车, your car. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. The can also be used to connect an adjective to a noun. And the adjective goes in front. So the word order in this situation is the same as English. So it's often used with two character adjectives. Sometimes if the adjective is just one character and the and the uh, noun is just one character, then you don't need this de. But in, for example, this first example you see here, 红色的衣服, this is used to connect the adjective 红色, red, with 衣服, clothes, and show the relationship between them in the sentence. So 红色, red, 衣服, clothes. 红色的衣服 means red clothes. That's quite simple, right? Another example, 小的酒店, 小的酒店. 小 means small or little. 酒店, hotel. So, 小的酒店 means a small hotel. Another example, 漂亮的女孩子. 漂亮, beautiful. 女孩子, girl. So, 漂亮的女孩子 means a beautiful girl. And we have to have this de in the middle, otherwise it's not correct in this case. So, this character de can also be used in sentences to express the ones who or the ones that, or the one who, the one that. For example, 我爱的人 means the person I love. 我爱. 爱 means love. 的 is this particle. And 人 means person or people. So, I love, and then 的 person means the person who I love. So this is a grammatical particle that's uh, showing the relationship between these two different parts of the sentence. And as I said, the the bit that comes after the de is actually more important in the sentence, or it's uh, more prominent. And the bit that comes before is just um, the information or the bit that's modifying the main part of the sentence, which comes at after the de. The main part of the sentence is 人, person. And what kind of person is it? It's 我爱的人. I love person. So the person who I love. Some more examples. 我看过的书. 书 books is the main part of the sentence. 我看过的. I have read. I have read books means the books I've read. And 抽烟的人 means people who smoke. Again, 人 means personal people. 抽烟 means to smoke. Cigarettes, so smoke cigarettes, the people, 
means people who smoke. So de can also be used on its own with an adjective to mean a certain one. Okay, so for example, 哪件毛衣是你的 Which sweater is yours? So here, 你的 means yours. 红色的红色的 So 红色 means red, and in this situation, 红色的 would mean the red one. This only really makes sense if you have the previous sentence there, when it's talking about which one, and then you can say 红色的 means the red one. So this is short for 红色的毛衣 red sweater, but you can just say 红色的 the red one. The can also be used as a modifier to give you more information about the noun. So this is a little bit similar to the, an example that you saw earlier. 我妈妈做的菜 means the food my mother cooked. So 菜 is the most important part of the sentence here. The food or the dishes 我妈妈做的 my mother cooked, and then 的 so the dishes or the food that my mother cooked. Some more examples: 杰克盖的房子 the house that Jack built, and so 房子 is the house, and 去北京的火车 means the train that goes to Beijing. 火车 is train. 去北京 go to Beijing, and then the makes、uh, it shows the relationship between the two parts of the sentence. In fact, you can say that the 去北京 is subordinate to The the 火车 at the end, but that's a little bit complicated to put it that way. Anyway, I think you can see how that works, and just a few other quick ways that the can be used. You can also see it in if sentences, where the 火的火 is part of the word for if. So, in this sentence, 如果你来的话，我们可以一起玩。如果 means if 你来 you come, and then. The hua is part of the word for if, effectively. We can play together. We can hang out. If you come, 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 we can hang out. Sometimes you will also see the with other characters making effectively words like shi de, you de, and hao de. So shi de is basically effectively a word. Um, when it's put together with this character, and it means that is the case or yes. So, are you going to do something? Shida, that is the case, or yes, I am. Halda, hal means okay, good, fine, and then halda as a kind of word means okay. So,、uh, do you want to do this today? Halda, okay. And the is also used in a number of other contexts as well, and too many small examples to explain in just one video. But I've explained effectively the main ways that all of these characters are used in this video. But to put it very simply, this the character that you can see at the top of the screen is generally used to connect different parts of the sentence together, different parts of the speech or clauses in the sentence to show the relationship between these different parts of the sentence and which one is subordinate to which other part. And the most important part of the sentence usually comes after the d, and what comes and what comes before the d is usually something that is modifying or is a modifier for the main part of the sentence. Okay, so hopefully you can understand what that means, and if not, you can have a look over these examples in the video again. So pay attention to this character d and see when it's used, and you'll probably figure out other examples as well. There are a few more that I haven't mentioned here. Please visit my website as well if you want to get more information and tips about learning Chinese, and if you want to be on the inside and get all of my exclusive tips and content as well as、uh, free exclusive bonuses for people who sign up to the list.、Um, make sure that you're on my mailing list, and you can sign up at fluentinmandarin.com by clicking the link on the screen right now or clicking the link in the video. So do that, and I'll see you on the inside. So thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next time.